uh, I love talking about this. This is what I do every day. Uh, this is my life. So to me, it's very easy to talk about mental, mental health. And, um, and I'm going to start with my story. I'm going to start with how I got here and why this is such an important topic for me. And the reason is that, um, well, I, I studied psychology, among other things that I'm going to tell you about later. But um, I was in college and I was studying psychology. And in that moment, um, something happened in my family. It was a, a very unexpected thing. Um, it was a financial problem that we had. And uh, we lost everything, basically. And in that moment, um, my panic attacks started. So I didn't know anything about panic attacks up until this moment. So imagine me studying psychology and all of a sudden I'm having trouble even getting out of my house. So I, <laughs> I said to myself, I am either the worst psychologist in the world or I should do something about this. This is happening for a reason. And, and I should put these two things together, my career, my profession, and what I'm going through right now. And that's exactly what I did. So I basically devoted my whole um, career, my whole college, my whole everything, every single essay that I had to do, every single research, every single everything. <laughs> my professors were probably just, they had enough of panic attacks, but I was just going in and deeper and just finding out more because back in those days, we didn't know so much about panic attacks and anxiety as we know now. Even in, even in, in the career, even in studying psychology, we didn't even know that much. So I was just um, trying to help myself in trying to do some more research. And at the same time, I thought, well, this is going to be useful for other people. This is going to be useful for my patients, my clients in the future. It's, it's very uncomfortable. I don't know if any of you have suffered panic attacks and if you have, um, you can write on the chat um, or like, you know, lift your hands there with a the little emoji, but it's very uncomfortable. Basically, you feel like you're gonna die every single day. There's all kinds of symptoms. I'm not gonna talk about that because that could be a little triggering for some people. Um, and it varies from person to person. Um, it, some, for some people, it's the head. For some people, it's the arms, the shoulders, the face. I don't know. Um, and it got to the moment, I got to the point that I couldn't, like I said, I couldn't leave the house. I couldn't get on a bus. And that was just so frustrating for me because I was coming from a very um, different life. I used to travel a lot. I was an exchange student in, in Europe. I was on my own. Uh, there with a different language with in a foreign land without my family and all of a sudden I just couldn't get in a bus in my own country it's just very weird and um, it even made me question my own worth and my self-esteem and everything just started to crumble down it's uh, one of the hardest things that I ever had to do in my life, but I'm also so very grateful because it's also the biggest gift that I had. So I was living this for about four years. Um, just, you know, every little thing was, was something extremely difficult. Like even going to the grocery store was difficult. Um, anywhere where there was a lot of people or a lot of noise or a lot of lights or anything that could trigger my senses was just very, hard and I couldn't understand what was happening. Um, but little by little, like I said, I started to read books. I started to listen to videos and talks and um, we didn't have podcasts back then, but we had the radio. So I was just filling myself with all this information and just trying to um, help myself go through this because I knew that if I, that if I did it, I could say to other people, yes, I, if I did it, you can do it. And I see there in the chat that some of you are saying yes, you know. So um, the first thing I want to I wanna say is that no one dies from a panic attack. No one can die from anxiety. It feels like that's going to happen. But I want to let you know that no one can die from this. It's very uncomfortable. I don't wish this to anyone. But at the same time, it can teach us a lot. So this is the reason why I tell you this. It's because that was like my pandemic. 
<laughs> before this pandemic in the sense that it felt very much like last year. Like I couldn't leave the house. Everything in my life was changing. I didn't understand the uncertainty, the questions that how do I do this? How do I navigate through this new reality that I have? So it's like I already lived what, what we lived last year. I had already lived it a few years ago. So that helped me to really um, help people and accompany, and accompany people in their own path last year with what they were experiencing. So as mental health, which is what I'm going to talk about today, it's very broad. Um, and now that you heard about my story a little bit, now you know why I connect with this topic and that I lived it in my own skin and that I understand exactly what it is not to have mental health, not to feel healthy in that way. So I, I gather a lot of tools and that I'm gonna share with you, but especially it helped me to understand how the nervous system works. So the nervous system, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because it's very complicated and it's, it would take a whole session, but basically um, it, it has two branches. One is the gas pedal and one is the brake. And we are constantly humans, we're constantly either on the gas pedal all the time, working, 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 doing, 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 super fast, everything intense, or we have the foot on the brake pedal. And sometimes we're doing both, but not in a very um, harmonious way. So sometimes we're just like rushing and then we hit the brake, boom, right, right away. So that doesn't feel good. And that's what we're doing with our nervous system all the time. That is not a balance. The balance would be to use both pedals in a, in a way that it feels more like a dance and not so much like breaking it and going and breaking, but more like just waves, just like the ocean, because both branches are important. So when we have too much break, that's when we go into more of a depression state. When we have too much gas, that's when we go into more anxiety. But when we have both, it's like this flow, like this stance, like we can move through life, but we're not constantly, you know, like jumping and, and feeling like there's something weird happening. So it's important to understand this because when you have a balance, a balanced um, nervous system, then that is what to me means to have mental health. When you have balance in your life, when you have both the rest and both the energy, when you're active and you're also doing other things that don't necessarily mean to, to be running and to be crazy doing things all the time. So at this point, I wanna ask you, and if you have like a notebook or uh, your cell phone that can work or even on the chat, I just wanna ask you uh, some simple, simple questions about this. So, what makes you feel energized? What makes you feel inspired? What makes you feel playful? And if you wanna share it there, there in the chat, that could help us. Or just write it down where you are. You don't have to share it with us, that's okay as well. So for example, I feel energized with music. Yes, thank you. Nature, sunsets, outdoors, great. This is great. And I'm, and I'm going somewhere with this. Yes, to me, music, music makes me feel energized. Music makes me feel playful. Yes, friends, that's a good one. Yes, music, friends. Cooking could be something else that makes you feel energized, inspired, playful. So the reason why I ask you this is because this is the balance part of that gas pedal. This is the balanced part of, of how we use, right, dancing. Yes, sun, music, outdoor activities, family, friends, excellent, gardening. Yes, 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 yes. This, as you can see, are all activities. No one said sleeping, it's activities. But at the same time, it's activities that makes us feel good. This is what balances the gas pedal. Okay, and so now it comes the other question. What makes you feel relaxed? What makes you feel connected?
To me, it could be meditation. Other type of music makes me feel relaxed. Some shows make me feel relaxed. Calm music, yes, yes, I see that. Nature makes me feel relaxed. Sleeping, yeah, sleeping, of course. Taking a nap, of course, that relaxes you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your dog, that's great. Your dog, yes, that helps relaxing. The reason why is because that, that connects with the brake pedal. The brake pedal is the one that helps us to slow down. Yes, calm music, watching the sunset. Yes, yes, exactly. And the reason why I said in the question, what makes you feel relaxed slash connected? Yeah, having a moment of silence. Yes, that is the great, great answers, everyone because you're talking about exactly what helps to balance the, the break, which is connection, nature, breath, meditation, praying, whatever you feel like doing that just helps you like, just let go for a moment. Just, you, you, you even feel it in your shoulders. It's like, oh, like, it, like it, it, your whole body calms down and relaxes but you're not completely frozen, which is the extreme of the, of the brake pedal, right? And the extreme of the gas pedal will be to always be running like a crazy person doing, 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 right? So that dance that I was telling you about, that flow, those waves are exactly what you're saying is to have a balance between doing things like gardening, like, like dancing, like taking a walk, like, um, I don't know what other things you said, like being with your friends, talking with your friends, making jokes or an, at a party or an activity. Those are all activities that helps us to stay engaged and active. And at the same time, if we just put those other activities in between the relaxation, the watching the sunset, the petting your dog, the having a heart to heart conversation with someone, it's so important because this strengthens our nervous system. This helps us to have that, whoop, you know, up and down that we need to have so that we can have health in our, in our mental, in our emotional, in our spiritual bodies. So that balance is what we need to create in our lives. If you realize that you're just too much on the gas pedal, then try to bring some of those activities into your life. Okay, like I'm gonna connect with my dog or I'm gonna connect with someone and connection, it's also very important. The latest research are showing us that connection really helps our nervous system and our mental health and to be okay. And that's why last year was just so hard and so painful because we couldn't connect anymore. But we all can always connect with nature we can always connect with pets. We can always connect this way, even though it's not the ideal, but we can connect in this way. So every time you have a conversation, you watch a, a face, you see a cute animal, you're connecting. Or if you have a spiritual practice, that is also connection as well. So if we start to like weave those things in our lives, then we can have the balance. Then maybe our emotions are gonna get a little bit you know, more balanced as well. Then our eating is also important. Mental health is not just watching the sunset and, um, but it's also whatever we, we um, eat. It's what we hear, it's what we watch, it's what we talk, it's what we do in our daily lives. So to me, that's mental health. When we can have all of those parts of our life as balanced as we can, eating well, sleeping enough, drinking enough water, watching the sunset, um, being playful, connecting with friends, um, doing what you like, like painting, dancing, some kind of hobby that makes you feel like being in the present moment. So that helps. What if I have a friend or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or my parents or my sister or my brother who is depressed or who is going through panic attacks or anxiety, what, what can we do? And the first thing is, it, depending on the severity, 
some people would need professional help. If it's a lot of depression, like I said, extremes, right? If it's too much depression and the person just doesn't want to get out of bed and then professional help is needed. Panic attacks as well. But we can also help to create community. So um, if you see a friend and that person is clearly in danger, you can talk to their family, their friends, or some person, some professional in this group, for example. You can talk to other people and say, I, I have someone who's going through something and we need to do something about this. So that's the first thing. And the other thing that you can do is to talk about this, to um, talk about what you do in your life to help yourself be more balanced, to feel better with yourself. It's very easy to try and go to, you know, give advice and say, hey, no, you know, just be grateful and smile. And for some people, it's not that easy. So um, just being there, even just, just your presence, just listening to that person is important. Um, accompanying, accompanying that person through their process is important. And when it's panic attacks, I, I say to people, be calm, that's the first step, just stay calm. And if you are calm, then you can just say to the person, hey, I'm here, I'm not going anywhere. Um, let me know what you need. That's a very important question. Tell me what you need right now. And sometimes they say, well, a glass of water, or sometimes they say, I need to, I need to go outside. So you, you can take them outside or I need to stay inside. Can you please stay with me for, yeah, sure. I'll stay with you and stay with that person until the panic attack ends. Um, so asking is very important more than just like lecturing someone or telling them what to do. Ask, what do they need? Do you need to talk? Do you need to just cry? Do you need to eat something? Whatever it is. So ask the person what they need and then try to try to do it yourself or try to find someone who can do, um, do it for them, like a family member or a professional. Um, again, this is a very broad topic. Um, obviously, every case is different, but the most important thing is to be there um, with um, no judgment, if it's possible, to ask the person what they need and to look for professional help. Wherever you are, just try to um, get as comfortable as you can, either closing your eyes or just taking a soft gaze to the floor, to the keyboard in front of you, whatever feels more comfortable to you. So sitting right there, let's just breathe a little doesn't have to be a deep breath, whatever you feel is good for your body right now. And let's just bring our attention to wherever it is that you're sitting at, whether it's a chair, couch, a bed. Bring your attention to the texture of that. Maybe it's soft, maybe it's hard. Maybe it's a cold surface, warm. And if you have your feet on the ground, just feel the floor. And breathe there. And now we're gonna ask our imagination to help us a little bit here. Maybe you can see in your mind, imagine a place that makes you feel good, whatever that is. It could be a beach, maybe some trees, forest. Maybe it's a house. It doesn't have to be a real place. Maybe it's a place that only exists in your imagination or in a movie.
And if you see that place, try to bring all your senses. See the colors. Touch things in that place. Listen to the sounds. Maybe it has animals. Maybe you can hear birds or the ocean. And if you're there, let's bring that energy into your body. And let's fill every cell with that energy through your breath. peace, protection, feeling safe, knowing that in this place, everything is okay. And again, taking another breath. Save this memory in your brain, the feeling, whatever you saw, this is your special place. This is a place where you can come back whenever you want, whenever you need. Let's bring our attention to our toes if that feels comfortable, legs, hips, stomach area, arms, hands, neck, head, and if you close your eyes, I invite you to gently open them again, or just come back into the space, come back to here and now. Breathing. Yeah, and welcome back. <laughs>